Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Successful CEO. My name is Ishan Malik, uh, the CEO of Yuya, and I'll be hosting the video today. We are speaking to a really cool guy today from the School of Marketing. He's the CEO there, Richie Mehta. Hi. Hey, hey Ishan, how's it going? Really, good? really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, doing well. It feels like uh, four months later, all I'm doing is just wearing t-shirts from now on. So actually, hey. I'm, I'm a happy guy, right? It's not too bad, right? No more suits and ties. Absolutely. Virtual backgrounds, Zoom, T-shirts, you know, and don't even shave anymore. So I'd say the world has certainly changed oh. as in the last couple of months. I know, I, I know. Did, Look at you, right? I did shave. <laughs> I Tell thought I had the, a few today. Brilliant. Well, I, ha I had the worst haircut of my life probably about three weeks ago. So it's kind of growing out a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, that's uh, certainly, you know, certainly things have, have evolved over, over this time. Excellent, excellent, That's cool. Great to be talking to you. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. So tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, a little bit about the School of Marketing. Yeah, of course. Well, look, um, let, me go, let me go right to the beginning, really. Um, so I'm half Scottish, half Indian. Um, lived out in Mumbai till I was about 15 years old. And then I moved to Scotland with my mum. So I've got a bit of a Scottish Indian accent thing going, depending on what word I say. So um, that's, that's the giveaway here. My, my party trick is asking people, uh, you know, if they can spot my accent. So it's, uh, I usually win in any case. Um, but uh, yeah, having, having done that, I, I, I then decided that uh, my first step into my career would be to be a banker for, for all my sins. And it was an interesting time back then. And we talk, we talk a lot about resilience, but I started my career in 2007, just pre-credit crunch and joined HSBC. And, um, you know, in that time, I guess, you know, learning a lot about the number of restructures big corporates can have and, uh, you know, did that for a while, realized that it certainly wasn't for me. But one, one amazing thing happened. I had a terrible boss. It was a, right. one, of those, one of those dull moments in life where I, I kind of felt like I just, you know, it was, you know, people, the, the classic saying, right, you know, you, you leave for your, you leave for your, you know, your boss, not the organization. Sure. Um, and it was, it was kind of lucky and fortuitous because actually probably the biggest career changes and moves I've had have been because of bad bosses. Um, and, uh, anyway, long story short, I ended up getting into marketing on the back of my banking career. Um, just because I, I kind of had enough of the boss I was working for, who, by the way, we are really good friends today. And oh, actually, I was he's, turned say, to really, he's, turned, he's turned out to be not at all, really nice guy um, now, but maybe not then. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, then I, and then I kind of, you know, I, I then decided to, to kind of, you know, full fledged into marketing, farmed home, love the, the creative part of it. Um, it's the combination of sort of heart and mind, which really got me going. Um, and it was a very young, youthful, creative space to be in. So that was really kind of really fulfilling me. Um, and it got to about seven years ago where I had another kind of epiphany moment where I was talking to my mentor on Bromley Hill for all my sins there. And uh, he kind of said, well, what do you want to do with your life? And uh, I decided to say I wanted to start a business school. So in, in that vein of thought and with his consent, I kind of left the journey, left corporate land and then started out on my own. And my first venture was basically moving into a uh, helping business school. So I started becoming, I became a lecturer in right. marketing and, and started business, I started business schools, um, kind of come up with new content, um, curriculums for undergrad and postgraduate courses in marketing. After about 30 of those or 40 of those courses designed, um, we scaled up into a fully fledged digital, digital production or digital learning production agency, um, which I currently still also run today called Learnital. Um, okay. where we basically are a technology house where we actually produce digital online learning on behalf of some of the biggest universities, corporates, governments of the world. Mm. Um, my passion for marketing and uh, education came back together about two years ago where we, we realized there was a massive problem within where young people were opting for alternative careers except for our own industry. And there's a massive right. study done by Marketing Week around that. And we felt there was something that we could do about it. And uh, that was the embryonic start. We teamed up with a couple of CMOs. Um, and then we realized very quickly that it was not only a youth problem, but actually there was a massive problem with upskilling within the industry. As, as Ishan, you know only too well, marketing changes almost on a daily basis. Absolutely, um, yeah. And on, and on that basis, we, we realized there was no marketing education player that could truly deliver um, to that need of the, of the corporate or the entrepreneurial marketer. And so the School of Marketing was very much born to fulfill that. And that's the journey we're sort of on today. We've got about 50 modules, about 10,000 subscribers. 
Um, and so, yeah, we feel like we're doing a pretty good job of being impactful for the industry as well. So that gives you a bit of insight into both. That's a, that's, a, that's a fascinating background that you've got going from like banking into marketing and the journey through it. It's great. Thank you. Really appreciate you sharing that. Thank you so much. So um, speaking of impact as the last word that you said, the current pandemic or the epidemic or however you look at it from a geography perspective, how has it affected your business? Well, Zishan, I think, um, you know, like anybody's business at this time, you know, it's, it's extraordinarily difficult. There's no doubt about it. Um, I think the one thing that we've, we've tried to do really is, is be really proactive with, with the types of things and using this as much as we can as an opportunity whilst others are silent to try and get out and be really helpful. So I wouldn't say, you know, we don't necessarily have a massive marketing budget, but what we do have is a shed load of effort and passion to substitute mm. for, for any dollar signs that we need. So we've, we've actually tried to turn this on its head um, and kind of say, well, how can we be impactful in, in this way and how can we be helpful? So we were the first, well, one of the first organizations in the UK to actually come up with a COVID course to help right. others to, to learn about how to, you know, to, to manage that the situation. And um, we actually offered that initially absolutely free um, to, to everyone who wanted to go through it. So there was no Excellent. commerciality involved there. Um, we then decided to, to launch a working from home course called, uh, let me get this right. So it's WFHWTH.com. Uh, and it it's was a, uh, there you go. Um, and it was, it was, again, it was all about helping people through with mental health issues at the time. Right. Um, and you could, you can go onto that today, uh, WFHWTH.com. Um, we roped in a range of celebrities ranging from Bollywood superstars to uh, comedians to corporate titans um, to help give advice and, and guidance. So we were trying Excellent. to be really proactive. Um, and, and on that basis, I guess, to some extent, you know, really leverage our brand and, and, mm -hmm. and generate some brand equity on the back of it, um, which I think has held us in really good stead. And that was probably for the first, I would say, first phase of, of the crisis. Right. I think as we moved, we moved into stage two, I think there, it was a lot more apparent that after the initial shock, our, our clients started sort of I guess, opening back up to the problems they're facing and a little bit of right place, right time. And I show you no strategy involved. Um, we just, we just ended up being in the sweet spot because we're a digital learning hub or platform. Uh, whether you look at it from my, my learner tile business or school of marketing, it's all digital content. It's all digital learning um, on all online learning. Um, although right. we do do blended programs um, and naturally held us in great stead. So we, you know, our subscriber numbers have tripled in the last three months. Um, our client base oh, has gone up tremendously. We've signed up partnerships. We're now in 15 countries. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily on the back of, of the pandemic, but certainly it's helped us accelerate. Um, and the conversation to digital learning is no longer a, um, a nice to have. It's an essential, you know, that, that, mm. that barrier no longer exists. And I think that's, you know, that's been positive for us. Um, but you know, being helpful and trying to grow the brand um, and, and just genuinely trying to make an impact, um, I think is, is, is what's kind of you know, maybe kept us in good stead at this time. Excellent, excellent. I mean, it sounds like you've really sort of thought about what's happening in the world and how you can sort of support and assist um, the people around you. That's amazing, really well yeah. done. Oh, thanks, thanks, mate. Look, I mean, it's, it's always a challenge, but I think that's you know, one-on-one -on -one of marketing, right? As, as you know. Mm. Um, is the need to understand your customer, understand their, their, their problems, um, and, then try, and then try and come up with those innovative ways to solve them. Um, but I think, the, you know, for me, one of the things that I, I'm, I'm most proud of, forget about all the other things that we've achieved, is we entered a load of competitions. So the, the government um, kind of came up with competitions, the UN came up with a competition, um, and we lost all of them. And we didn't right. do a damn thing about it. And, you know, we, we didn't win any and, and all the stuff. But I'm most proud of the fact that the team stepped up. And we kind of went, you know what? There's a massive problem to solve there. Let's try our best. And it's that mentality um, about looking at, you know, an adverse situation as an opportunity that I think is a mentality that will help businesses to grow, you know, into the future now. Um, right. Because there is a lot of uncertainty. And I, I almost feel like if we think we had it bad up to this point, just wait and see, right? Mm. Because there's a, there's a lull factor that I think is now going to play. And, you know, there's... As, as much as I can never call the pandemic exciting because it's not and it's horrendous. Um, and the personal impact on, on many people is, is tremendous. And 
It's like, I don't want to belittle that at all because it's, it's so relevant. But there is always an, an aspect of actually we're going through a shock moment and there's a reaction. Um, and that reaction, you know, is an impulsive reaction. But actually the strategic reaction comes when you go on the rebound. It's this curve. And this curve is going to be elongated for a while to come. And so I think there's where the opportunity lies for many businesses to be able to, to reposition, um, to take advantage, or to be honest with you, if they don't reposition well, you're going to see the fallout happening now. So I think now is more the right. critical thing about how businesses react compared to even what's gone on before. Right. So, I mean, thinking about the future within your industry now, I mean, you're talking about how things are flattening out and you've got the curve where businesses are now thinking and I mean, you know, in, even in my business, I've seen people are coming back to work, conversations are starting up again. So it's good. If yeah. you, if, if I had, uh, sorry, rather, if you had uh, a magic ball that you could look into, where do you think your industry will be in like uh, 12 to 24 months time? Um, look, it's a, it's a very difficult question. Mm. And I think, I think the, I think there's certain obvious candidates to think about. You know, um, but let's stop there for one second and actually talk about probably the biggest danger that I see in this environment right now. And that is the, what, um, what Ali Pazner in his, in his TED talk, uh, talks about as filter bubbles. And I'm not sure if you've, you've, you've watched it, um, but you must do it. You, I will do now. It's, it's a, a fantastic talk. And, and the premise is very, very simple. And as a digital marketer, you'll get this in an instant. But effectively, what we're doing is we are carving around us, in the, say in the virtual world, and more people are spending more time on media at the moment in digital media. What we do is effectively we carve out our own little filter bubble around us. So, you know, everything gets personalized. The more media you consume, the more personalized it gets because of the platforms. And so we start to read about all the things that we want to read about ourselves. Right. And then what we do is we post rationalize and say, oh, my God, because of what I'm reading about, this is the way the future is then going to go. Um, and it's marketing one, the biggest mistake in marketing 101 is you don't actually look at the consumer, but you go inwardly focused. And I think the problem is we're in a double bubble situation because on the one hand, we're consuming more digital media at the, mo at the moment time, creating a virtual bubble around us. And of course, we've got this physical bubble around us at the moment in our own little world that we are, are all currently under. Mm -hmm. And I think the danger of predictions at this stage is that we actually are predicting from a double bubble situation. Um, and that's actually very dangerous because all that's going to happen is we're going to be self-serving. We're going to say that our industry is going to be the one that's thriving, or if we pivot in this way, that's going to happen. And we've got to be very careful about that. So I would say the first biggest caution with any of this is actually get out and speak to people and actually see about how things are happening. Um, if you analyze, if you analyze previous crises, uh, take the, uh, the financial crisis as an example. Um, I'll give you a great stat. Zishan. So I work Over. in HSBC. We love stats. Well, at the time, and maybe, maybe, maybe a bit of a quiz, really. So when, when the subprime crisis hit in the U.S., HSBC was one of the first people to actually come out and, and declare there was a problem. And they, they basically suggested in that first quarter that the extent of the problem was a billion dollars um, that of, of default capital. At the end of the crisis, what do you think was the number that they finally posted as the, as the extent of it? 50 billion. 17. 17, 17. billion. So from one as what they thought was the most accurate prediction at the time to 17. And I dare say, you know, the, the, the recession went on for what about three, four, five years. Yeah. Um, we are literally at the start of that process once again, where we are at the, at the point of that billion dollar sort of prediction. Right. And actually we don't quite know how far the pendulum is going to swing either way. Right. Um, right. And so again, so when making predictions, I think we've got to be very careful and cautious just about, you know, which way the, the pendulum is going to swing. Um, particularly in our little blinkered worlds that we operate in. Um, I'm hopeful as, a, as an, an internal optimist that the, the learning industry is going to go through a disruption on the back of this. Um, clearly, we're seeing the trends of, as I talked about, you know, there's no longer barriers of online and digital. And I think that's very positive. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm silently confident that that's a wave that's, that's going to be good, good for us at least. Um, from a marketing perspective, I think we're, we're turning a corner, clearly. Um, mm -hmm. At the moment, 81% of, of marketers are, are suggesting that their budgets are being put on hold or cut in this current instance, which certainly can't be good for marketing training, um, let's be honest. Um, but, you know, the, the whole notion around the digital aspect of it is, is clearly here to stay. Um, you know, we, talked, we, we talk about the rise of e-commerce, 
I actually, I am actually more excited about the rise of D2C than I am of e-commerce generally. Right. Although I think they both, they both have their places and strategies. Um, and you know, where do we fit within that? Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, well, I certainly think that marketers, you know, need to be more inventive of, of using more than one of the four P's that they traditionally try to use, which is promotions. Actually marketers in today's landscape need to be a little bit more inventive and creative and consider what the other three P's look like in order to be truly value adding and helpful. Um, so maybe those are some indications with a few caveats in between. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. Well, look, um, I realize we're short on time. So I just want to say thank you so much for you know, taking the time out of your day and speaking to us and uh, giving us some insights in what's been happening. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, how should they contact you? Um, by all means, just link, link up with me on LinkedIn and, uh, and, and send me a message and uh, yeah, I'll get back in touch. Great. So what I'll do is I will put the contact details of Richie down below in the description of this video. Um, you have his uh, LinkedIn, you have his website, and I'll, I'll grab all your social media channels as well and I'll stick them all in. So go in and follow these guys, get in touch with them and get involved. Richie, Sounds good, Isha. Thank, thank you. you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Hey, you too as well. Thanks for having Take me. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers.